And uh, the one we're going to be seeing in match number one, I've had the opportunity to bowl with for years and years, Don Scudder. He, uh, the classic form, simple, keep it simple and accurate and a clean, healthy roll. Don Scudder is about as well-schooled as you can come up with. Not an impressive hook, but throws a lot of pins from right to left. His opponent is going to be Bill Pollard. Bill Pollard has been around forever and ever. He's wheeling from the left side as usual. And again, nothing overpowering, but accuracy was the key here at Strikes and Spares over the weekend. And uh, this is what we're seeing. We're seeing the best of the best. All right, now, David, I've asked you to go on a limb many times this year. You haven't done it. Who's going to be our king today? Well, the, uh, judging from the stat sheet on this particular pair, it'll probably be uh, one of the four players we're going to be seeing here. As usual, never fails. We've got it for you, folks. It's our final on the beautiful King of TV Bowling. Stick around. Cincinnati BPA's Hudipole King of Bowling. Brought to you by Hudipole 14K, the Cincinnati legend. Remember the name, you'll never forget the taste. Then is now again, Cincinnati, and the flavor's pure 14K. Time to enjoy the crisp, refreshing taste of a Cincinnati legend. Remember them, 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 them. Beautiful 14K. Remember the name. You'll never forget the taste. Lee's famous recipe makes the best tasting chicken in town. We bake fluffy, scratch buttermilk biscuits glazed with melted butter. Taste our country fresh salads and hot vegetables. Now you can get famous with Famous Recipes Catering Hotline. Dial chicken. That's 244-2536 for great chicken and side dishes for your next party. Famous Recipes Catering Hotline. The great taste keeps you coming back. Spring comes early at America's Choice. America's Choice is eager to announce our spring cleaning sale. Reduced prices on all 1987 homes and specials on all 88 models. It's your choice at America's Choice. Free microwave, free washer and dryer, or free park rent. Come on by this weekend for all the exciting details. See why Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky are making America's Choice their choice in mobile homes in Milford and Walton, Kentucky. Take your choice, America's Choice. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back. Our final on the Hudipole King of TV Bowling. And this is what it's all about. What we've been waiting for this year, you're looking at Don Scudder. A guy we have seen over the years. Not a whole lot this year, but he shows you why he belongs in our final to get started. Oh, Tommy, I was talking to him before we started the show, and Don Scudder, as you alluded, where you haven't seen a lot of him, but he is pumped. He wants this one. He told me before the show, he wants this as bad as he's ever wanted anything in bowling. And I think we're going to see a lot of good shots out of him today. He feels comfortable with the condition on 7 and 8. As we watch Mr. Pollard cross over and start the match with a Brooklyn. Now you see Ron, or Bill rather. I got him confused there with his son for a second, who is our king. Tommy, there's so many Pollards. We can understand <laughs> that, okay? I apologize. Bill Jr. Probably the best of the bunch, I'd venture. Oh, man. <laughs> I wouldn't let here we go again. I know. I wouldn't let Bill hear any of that. <laughs> I think he'd probably agree, to tell you the truth. Going in the second. Right. And ten more in the pit for Bill Pollard. Well, to set up, uh, set up the match, Tommy, you asked me in the open who might win. Well, I'm, again, we've got talent personified, but let me set it up. I didn't want to say it in front of the competitors. They already know this, but... On this pair during the qualifying, seven and eight, Roy Chesbro shot 268. Alan Runkle had a 171. Don Scudder at 213. 
and Bill Pollard a 190. The right-handers seem to have an advantage on this pair, judging from the stats that we have. Don Scudder starts out with another brilliant strike on lane eight, and he is lined up. He said he's comfortable with the shot. The ball's rolling clean. Today may be the day. How fitting would it be, huh? <laughs> How fitting would it be? Well, you know, you, you mentioned the fact, Dave, that the right-handers may have the advantage today. Uh, for the most part, to be quite honest about it, over this course of the year, it's been the left-handers which have dominated our show. Well, exa exactly right, Tommy, and uh, and and still they uh, uh, they're in a, a very good position. There we see Don Scudder is he pumped up or what? The uh, the replay will probably show us that uh, Mr. Scudder is excited and his ball is active. He's hitting his mark. Watch it here right over the ninth board straight up at him rooted home Don there you go one three pocket as he runs into frame back to Bill Pollard right lane also is perfect with the first three strikes Wow looks like we're gonna see some action stay tuned don't move lots of strikes on their way on this finals of the king of television bowling and well speaking of our men's final today we've got our youth final next weekend and the week after that it will be the women's final and Jennifer Kleekamp will hopefully be right in that class of ladies I hope so I'd be willing to bet some money on it matter matter yeah I would too <laughs> yeah you, you're really going out how much, in there, aren't how much you Dave? Would you bet Tommy <laughs> The first Aaron shot we've seen from Bill out of the last three frames, even though he opened the match with a Brooklyn, this particular shot went wide, leaving the 3-9. And we've alluded to it before. Anytime you have that sleeper pin, it's not an easy spare. Let's see how Billy can bring this one back. Should hit it just to the left of center. There you go. I guess uh, you bowl as many years as Bill Pollard has, and you see a few of those over the course of time. Oh yeah, he's a class A1 spare shooter, which is really what it takes. The strikes will come. If you can stay clean and make your spares, you can be with the best of them. Of course, we're looking at one right here, Don Scudder on the right lane. He's Three in a row. Light also. Yeah, more speed that time, Jen. I don't know if you picked it up, but the adrenaline we talked about will create a 2-4-5 shot. Don Scudder on this shot. Let's take a look at it. We'll throw the ball a little harder. He gets the ball in, too, over 10, where he gets a nice clean roll. Head pin going to the wall and not coming off cleanly to take out the 2 or the 4, which would normally take out the 5 on the wall shot. Difficult spare, and more so than that, he loses a pin in count to Bill Pollard. If he brings this back, it'll be one pin down. Now well, he's looking to pick it up, and he does. So after both players did not miss through the first three frames, both come back in the fourth with spares. There you take a look. One pin deficit. Don Scudder, because of the bad count, leaving the 2-4-5 is one pin down, going into the fifth frame. However, at this point, one pin is basically meaningless, unless both players would take it off the sheet, of course. And then it would be much more than meaningless. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Don Scudder would go home early. Intense concentration there, Tommy. You can tell you he's he got really his wants. speed back down, too. Now, Next. why all of a sudden, Dave, would he, would he uh, pick up his speed like he did on the last ball? Well, you want it. Let's, let's watch it here on the replay. Let's, we can take a look at it a lot smoother. And he's going to hit the ninth board. There you see it going over the ninth board, which is the area he wants to hit to get that good clean roll. There you see him again running into frame, but you saw the strike. Don Scudder's got to keep the adrenaline in check so that it does not cause him to throw the ball harder, Tommy. Well, I tell you, Bill Pollard went right at the head pin. He's lucky he didn't come up with a split. That's exactly right. Leaving only the two pin could have been the 2-7, could have been the 2-7-10, almost anything. But now the advantage comes back to Don Scudder with the strike working in the sixth frame. Bill Pollard has two sanctioned 300s, and we are talking about his children uh, before. They all have 300 games, which I think is just terrific. Of course, they're from Pollard's Bowl in Versailles, Indiana. I believe it's a 16-lane house. Hoosier State. Down in the Hoosier State. Right. 
the Hoosier State. Yeah, had a little uh, fun with that one week, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we sure did. I'll tell you, folks. Kentucky, or <laughs> yeah. Thank God for tape television at times. I'll tell you what. If I said the Hoosier State of Kentucky once, it was three times. <laughs> and the layoffs got harder with everyone too. It was it, fun. Uh, We've had a lot of fun with this show over the last uh, 13 weeks. This, look oh. at this. This is, of course, our 14th and final week for the King of Bowling as we're going to watch this late-breaking story out of Bill Pollard. Left lane. Take a look at it here. The intensity on his face, not quite as evident as Don Scudder. And the pins that are going to do the job, that's a head pin going to the channel right there, bouncing off, doing a whirly bird. Now we're going to get out of here. Late breaker. Yeah, I late like breaking that story. That's that good. You guys use that. <laughs> that was good. You guys use that on the news all the time, don't you? Late breaking story. Don Scudder leads the week 10 we always talk about. Watch it here. The ball's going to jump to the right after it hits the pocket. Take the three pin straight back. Now that is the six pin going to the channel, and the angle is just too extreme to let it climb out. There for a moment had the 8 10. Cross lane for the 10 pin should be an easy spare. Don Scudder, of course, works with the State Employment Agency. He's single. He averages 209 to 217 in various leagues he bowls. Has bowled a 300, like you mentioned. Oh, but of course. Yeah, I'd like to know how many. <laughs> yeah. He didn't write it down. Most of the most of the gentlemen do, and they have uh, written down here what their highest game is. If it's 300, they want to tell you how many I 300s they've had. <laughs> I'm sure he has more than more than a couple. As we're watching Don Scudder, let me run down the games he threw yesterday. 213, game one. 224, 213, 203, and then he turned on the afterburner. 278, and then finishing with 206 to wind up in this position and make our telecast today. You folks at home that are talking about uh, you know, those listening to those kind of scores, Dave was just rattling off. That probably gives you an indication of what it takes to really get here in this final. These are the city's best. Mm, it is a lot of pressure, too. It's only six games to make it. You know, if you're behind with only one or two games to go, you got to have that big game to make it here. The best. But of course, Don did that. That's right. The best of the best. We're looking at it. Don Scudder averaged 223 for his games yesterday. And he brings back the four pin. The match is very, very close. Advantage swings back to Mr. Pollard. See what he does with that X up in the sixth. Put a little pressure on Don with the double. Of course, we all know Don can handle it. Don can handle a lot of things, that's for sure. Pressure being one of them. Here's Bill Pollard in the seventh. And oh, he little down. A little emotion out of uh, Mr. Pollard this time, not something we're used to seeing. He says he wants it bad. Watch it on the replay. I don't know if we're going to get to see him go down on his knee. Nah, we're not going to see it. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. <laughs> so, solid strike. One, two pocket filled up. Ten pins in the pit. Every pin doing his job. There you see it. Fifth frame tied up. Advantage, double working for Bill Pollard. Takes a basic ten pin lead. Strike here, could he take command of the match? Not command yet, but he's definitely gonna give uh gonna definitely give Don Scudder something to think about now. Eighth frame coming down the final stretch. He throws it a little bit snug. Watch it on the replay. The head pin on this one is going to go straight back. The two pin is not gonna do its job, but watch the head pin on this one. Ah, we didn't get to see it, but that's there him. he is, but that's we gotta see him down on his knee. That's though. right, that's right. We got to see the, the head pin also laying in a ditch uh, just about uh, trying to work its way out to take the six out. Well, here's the spare shooting, and again, Pollard picks it up. So now Don Scudder has his work cut out for him to try and answer back with a couple of strikes of his own. This is where you see Don accelerate, the eighth, ninth, and tenth frame. Guarantee it'll be there. If he hits the ninth board, I predict he will strike. It's there. there. Oh, it's there, and he pulled it. It's there, and he pulled it. Critical situation, Jen. Something we're not used to seeing Don do. Uh-uh, not at all. Uh, normally, he'll throw a rope, and he'll throw a great shot, and he might lose a hit, but not used to seeing him throw a bad was shot. was there. His elbow must have come out or something. Flailed around the ball. Well, that, he just looked over here, and you could tell he was very disappointed in that shot. 
I guess disappointment is probably for lack of a word that we can't use on this telecast. <laughs> yeah, it crops up a lot. 12 pins, 12 pins. Don Scudder is down going into the critical ninth and 10th frame. Now what that means, Tommy, is that if he were to uh, want to win this match, and we're sure he does, he's going to have to throw a strike here in the ninth, the critical ninth frame building, and then throw another one in the 10th to wipe out the deficit. And then from that point on, it's an even match, but he needs two strikes. Well, this is the first game of our final here today, folks, from Strikes and Spares in Deer Park. All the marbles on the line today and all the bucks. Scudder needs the strike to stay alive. Yep. There you go. Had to have it in the ninth frame to work on it, to, something to build on, and to give Bill Pollard something to think about. Well, we've talked between these two guys, folks, just to give you a rough idea. Bill Pollard has been qualifying on this show since 1966. Don Scudder has been qualifying since 1975. A couple of veterans. And that's what veterans do, Tommy. When you need one, you throw it right in the hole. The replay will show us that Bill Pollard throws an absolute perfect strike on this shot. Nice deep knee bend at the line. Look at the clean ball rotation here. One, two pocket filled up. Five pin, last one to go out. It's gonna travel over there where the 10 pin was. Bill Pollard did win the finals of the King in 1971, so he's been in this situation before. Well, he, right there. again, he shows you why. Defeated Rudy Dukes, two, or, uh, 686 to 658, I'm told. And this one is about the 11th board, and it absolutely crucifies the pocket. There you see it. That's the way to do it. Ten in a pit. If he gets this strike, the match is over. Now yeah, Bill Pollard going to try to seal it in our first game of the King Finals today. That should do it. Don Scudder, the one frame. He started one frame too late. The eighth frame was the key frame for Don. Throwing a... Uh, a bad shot as far as our standards go for Dono and folks at home, please, we're not being overcritical of these bowlers. We just know their potential, we know their capabilities, and we've watched them do what they had to do for years and years. And that particular time, Don did not answer it. Bill Pollard's going to go on to our second match today and try to work his way up for his second King Finals. Well, Don Scudder just going to finish out the match, and that's the shot he would have liked to have had a couple of frames ago. Boy, both players started out just splendidly. Strikes in the first three. And Scudder missed in the fourth, struck in the fifth, spared, though, in six, seven, and eight, which hurt him because in six and seven, Pollard had strikes. But I'm sure he'll be back next year. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's almost amazing. He just steps right up there. He's taking a lot less time and just bam, bam, 10 down. Well, he knows he knows the line he wants to play. And he knows how he should throw the ball. And Tommy, at this point, well, in our careers, we the mechanics of the game, if you have to think about mechanics at this point in your life, you're you're in a hard way to go. I mean, you just, the mental part of the game is all we really have to work on anymore. And uh, Don Scudder, eighth frame, key frame. And we're gonna see, there's Big Lou writing it in there for us. 234 to 244. Bill Pollard will go on to our second match today, the King of Bowling Finals. This is what we've been waiting for for the last, well, about uh, 11 or 12 weeks, Kathy. It's time to give away that money, and we've got a lot of it to give away. We have $1,300 to give away to 26 players from our home and studio audience. Well, let's do it here in just a second. But just to explain to you folks how we're going to do it, of course, we haven't had a winner on the Golden Ball Contest since the very first week. Now, the dollar amount has accumulated slowly but surely every single week. 
As Kathy mentioned, our jackpot now $1,300. She will be drawing the 13 names from our studio contestants, 13 names from our home players, and the names she chooses, they're 1300 bucks richer. So, Kathy, who is that lucky folk? <laughs> this is some pretty serious business here. All right. We have a Debbie Barr from Cincinnati, Ohio. Debbie Barr, Cincinnati, Ohio, you have just won $1,300. We have had a real good time this year, Kathy, and I hope we'll be back next year. I hope we get to do it next year. It's fun. We had a lot of people writing in. We had about 50 people writing in every week, and we had more people show up at the TV show just for the Golden Ball Contest. And I'd like to thank the good folks at Utiful for being a big part of that. Yes, thank you. All righty. We'll be back with more in just a second. There we are, Greater Cincinnati BPA and the Hudipole Brewery is, well, they're the people that bring you this fine telecast for many, many years now, and we're proud to be on WLW. There you see our proud peacock there to the left. Alan Runkle, the hot hand in town. We've uh, talked about him many, many times. Shot a 300 in his way to making our telecast today. 300 last week in the city tournament. 300 yesterday in qualifying has the hot hand. Bill Pollard is going to start the match. Lane seven here at strikes and spares. And on this particular pair, if you're going with stats, which mean absolutely nothing, Bill Pollard shot a 190, and Alan Runkle started his qualifier on this pair with a 171. That pretty lady you're looking at in the background with the black hair is Alan's wife, Mary Ann. And his mama. Right next way? to her, there's his father. Got the whole family out here. And that brought him down exactly from, yeah, brought him down from Cleveland, Tommy. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, they're probably very nice folks. I haven't had a chance to meet his parents, so I'm not going to comment. Normally, I would jump all over something from Cleveland, but we'll stay away <laughs> from that today. Well, they, uh, we went to upstate to bowl a tournament about a month ago, and uh, Lenny Ramsey and myself were invited to spend the evening. There's Lenny Ramsey there in a red shirt. We were invited to spend the evening at uh, at their home. They offered us the hospitality of their home and a little home cooking. Whew. Bet you did some damage, didn't you? <laughs> I mean to tell you, I love to get out of town and uh, eat. Yeah, that's right. Eat. <laughs> Dave, I want to ask you a little bit about Alan. You mentioned the fact that he has had the hot hand without question in qualifying the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, when he's come on the show, he has not done nearly as well. Have you had a chance to talk to him about that at all? Well, Alan Runkle, as good as he is and as, and as well as he's been bowling, is still basically a newcomer to television. Um, he doesn't say he's nervous. But it's a different environment altogether. I mean, with the lights and the fact that there, there isn't more going on around you. Alan Runkle just throws an absolute rope here, leaves a stone seven. A little bit more speed. Now the culprit here is going to be the four pin. Second one from the left-hand side of your screen. You see it go right around the belly. Cannot, could not have missed that seven pin by more than a half an inch. Well, Alan Runkle, who has been on our show three times this year, this being his third, looking to Look pick out. up a spare, and he missed it. Boy, what a tough break. Well, you've alluded to it a hundred times, Tommy. Making your spares is the key on this show. This ball is not going to miss it by much, but you see it trying to hang on on our 60-foot lane bed. There it is, dropping off about three inches too soon. Well, now Bill Pollard with a chance to take early command here, but he goes to the opposite side. And it goes right straight through the heart of the pins, leaving... Well, leaving the 2-7. The right-hander's 3-10. We call it the baby split. And again, it's not that difficult to pick up. Bill Pollard should move to the right-hand side of the approach. Take a little bit off the ball. Throw it into the left-hand side of the 2-pin and let the ball kind of carry him off into the 7. Let's see. Now he's shooting a little unorthodox there. And unfortunately, that's what can happen if you don't utilize all the area that they give you. Chops the 2 off the seven, and we have a one-pin match. Advantage, Alan Runkle. Big break for Alan Runkle. He's really upset after missing that seven pin. That usually makes it feel a little better on an errant shot when somebody else throws an errant shot. Absolutely. 
Well, Bill Pollard going to try to regroup. And uh, not a bad looking shot. A little high. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, Bill Pollard will probably have no chance of missing this pair after missing that last slight split. Very slim. Bill Pollard, as we alluded to the last game, a 56-year-old Versailles, Indiana native. There's the spare. And as newspaper people do from time to time, uh, we're going to uh, print a, uh, a retraction. Bill Pollard was not born in Germany. He uh, did, in fact, meet his wife in Germany while he was serving his country. Oh, yeah, that's a United Kingdom thing, isn't it? All right. And that's where he started bowling at the age of 22. Yes. Well, Alan Runkle, that's the kind of shot that we are, where we have been used to seeing him roll and qualify. Uh, this is the shot. This is the one you want to see. It's a little snug, but you're going to get a great reaction to watch the six pin. Second one from the right-hand side of your screen. Alan Runkle's rooting at home there. That's the three pin going to the wall, coming off, taking the 10. Ooh, yes, Alan. And the six pin, one shot. Allen takes the advantage, one pin in the second frame, plus a strike in the third to Bill Pollard's spare. 28-27, Runkle in the second. And as David mentioned, Pollard spared, Runkle struck, but completely air and shot, Tommy. Just going way wide with the ball. You see him losing his footing just a wee bit. I was going to say, that I don't remember him being that close to the foul line at all. A little bit too much slide and uh, pulled up off the shot. Kind of like a bad landing on an aircraft carrier. Yes, ba sir. Bailed out. Well, he's going to look to pick up that one pin and a spare here in the fourth frame. The winner of this match will go on to meet our tournament leader, Roy Chesbro, who we've seen before. Big story on Roy Chesbro. Well, not a big story, but we're going to save it for the last game, so don't go away. Absolutely not. We've got some heavy cash to give away today, Jen. Yes, we're looking at $1,700 first place, and I think about eight fifty dollars or so for second. Ouch. Stone 10. So, way do you see this one, folks. This is the smash, the one none of us like to see. The head pin is going to not do its job. Alan Runkle's watching the shot here. That's the head pin, the three pin going to the wall, coming off in front of the 10 pin. Normally that ball would take out the 10, but not -uh, not today. Got to settle for a spare. Well, this one is slowly becoming a game of spare shooting, and who is going to get the count? <laughs> Lou, Lou Hudipol, our... Uh, my bro-in-law, and the, uh, he's down there. He's trying to fix our score sheet, which fell down. He'll do a starling job, as usual, or is it sterling? Sterling, I think, is the yeah. word, yeah. <laughs> All right, still it's a good try, though. <laughs> Falling down as, again. Well, as a matter of fact, we could probably just make up a new phrase altogether, a starling job. Yeah. Nobody likes starling, so we won't go See, why don't you use that throughout the rest <laughs> of the show? <laughs> Okay, Bill Pollard, Aaron shot going through the head pin, leaving the 2-4. Again, not the easiest spare in the world, but not the toughest. He should take more of an angle on his left-hand spares and play a little bit from the right-hand side of the approach. Dave, we've talked about adjustments and players being able to make the proper adjustments all year long. Now, Pollard had a 244 the last game. Is there anything that he's not adjusting to in this one, as far as you can tell? Well... Again, looking at his game, it's it's very simple, Tommy, and uh, you really can't judge from it. But uh, we'll take a closer look at it when we come back from this commercial message. Last week at Glenmore Lanes, Ron Bonner shot a 245 to defeat Don Waddell and become our current champion. Lee's famous recipe salutes Ron Bonner on becoming this week's King of Bowling. Well, we are back, and we take a look at the score, and we've got a close one. Dave, I want to ask you, a lot of times so far this year, when we've gone to a break, both players were rolling well, or at least one was rolling very well, and the break could affect them. I would imagine that both players welcomed the break this time. 
Uh, I would have to agree with you, Tommy. Neither player being comfortable with what they've done so far. The break is probably an opportunity to regroup. Let's watch the replay, and we're going to see last two pins on your screen are going to be the six and the eight. Head pin goes straight back. That's the three pin going to the wall, and then eventually kicking it out, and get out of here, eight pin. We want have to get a some seat. strikes. Yeah, have a seat is right. Well, there's the first shot after the break, and it's a strike. Alan Runkle going to try to make it two for two as he steps up there on lane number seven in frame number six. See ya. Perfect. The break, the break is how yeah, he's got his momentum back and his enthusiasm. Well, Bill Pollard, let's see what Bill did in the qualifier. Started out 229, 223. 190, 211, 256, and then 209 were his six games, and he averaged uh, a solid 220 to make our telecast for today. And Tommy, you called it. Both players look a lot more relaxed coming back out of the break. Well, I didn't call it, Dave. I just asked you. No. You're the expert. Oh, yeah. I am just the layman here. Yeah, but you're in tune to these sports people. You know, you're around them all the time. And uh, oh, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Blados for his advice, uh, medical advice he gave me last Sunday at uh, at Super Bowl. Is Thanks, that right? Guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Helped you out a little bit. He said, "Put some ice on it." There you and go. So <laughs> it worked. Please don't send me a bill, though. Stone seven. Bill Pollard, left lane, chance to get right back in it. Four pin does not do its job here, Tommy. Let's keep our eye on it. Second one from the left-hand side of the screen. It's going to go around the belly of the seven. There you see it. Missing by inches. And this tough, is a game of break. inches. It is a tough break, Jen. And sorry to see that. I'd like to see them both take it to the wall and see what they're made out of. Four pins. The advantage, Alan Runkle with a double working makes it 14. And Bill Pollard brings his spear back. It almost looked like he fell down there or, or tripped up. Boy, that could have been that could have been very <laughs> costly. If a bowler gets up on his toe too much at, at the line, Tommy, it's going to you just mess up your weight distribution quite a bit, and it's going to appear to be a stick. But you actually get too much weight in such a small surface on your shoe that that it'll stop you. Not really a stick per se. There you go. Both players say, here, you take it, I don't want it. <laughs> Alan Runkle going right straight through the heart, leaving the four pin. What a break for Alan. Alan is a self-employed investment broker and insurance agent in Cincinnati here. He's ma been married for three and a half years. And of course, we saw Mary Ann before, a very beautiful and nice lady. There, there she, she is. is. Hey. <laughs> well, Can't miss her. There she went. We open up, we see her again. Very, very nice. Very hospitable. Anytime I drop over the house, she points me towards the uh, fridge. So <laughs> get your own shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alan Runkle picks up the stair. And Dave, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bail you out of this one. All right. How does our match shape up? Oh, uh, well, the match is shaping up rather well. Thirteen pins. Alan Runkle is in the lead. Both players with a spare in the seventh frame. Coming into the eighth frame, the final mile pole, we might say. Final mile pole. I don't know. I just, okay. I'm all wound up here. I'm Alan started bowling in Buffalo, New York at the Rose Bowl lanes up there, and he has six collegiate titles and four Buffalo Bowling Association titles. And he has cashed in every pro, burn, pro bowling tournament that he's ever bowled. A good shot there. Sure was. The fried five, medium rare. We're going to watch a five pin go from left to right and hacksaw the ten straight out. This is a powerful shot. He gives it a little room. Now watch the five pin. Second one back, middle of your screen, right there. Take a hit. Ten pin, you are out of here. Well, there you see, kind of kicking back. Sipping on a Pepsi. Yes, indeed. Wow, he got a break there to avoid that disastrous split. You're right, Tommy. Leaving only the 610 could have been could have been the 6710, and therefore a lot more difficult to make. Bill Pollard needs a spare here to uh, stay in the match. He's giving away a few pins, though. Uh, at this point, you're looking at a 15-pin match. He loses the advantage and picks up the spare. Interesting to note. After picking up the spare in the eighth frame, Bill Pollard applied some pressure with strikes in the ninth and tenth frame. 
But Alan Runkle held on to win game two of the King of Bowling. 193 to 188, Alan Runkle will be right back. Wanna go bowling? I'd be delighted. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Schott of Cincinnati's Brewery. Today's show marks the end of the 25th season of King of Bowling. And I'd like to thank all of you for watching the show, and also thank Tom Brenneman, Dave Newrath, Jennifer Kleekamp, and all the great people at the BPA for the job they have done in making this year's show a real first-class event. We look forward to next year's show and the balance of Cincinnati's bicentennial year. We hope when it comes to ordering a beer or picking up a 12-pack, you'll remember our support for King of Bowling and the hundreds of organizations and groups we support and say, hey, give me a Cincinnati beer. The best in the world is brewed right here. Oh, Cleveland's got it all over Cincinnati. Come on, Cincinnati's got the Bengals. Cleveland's got the Browns. Cincinnati's got the best college basketball. Cleveland's in the NBA. <laughs> Cincinnati's got a fantastic riverfront. Cleveland's got an entire lake. We've got Cincinnati beer. When it comes to a little friendly competition, nothing in the world beats the taste of a Cincinnati beer. Welcome back to Strikes and Spares in Deer Park. You're taking a look at a guy who has been a dynamite bowler for years and years, Steve Fair. And as Dave said, this is the big one. Stage is set for our king final. And you're looking at Roy Chesbro, who is the number one qualifier here at Strikes and Spares, and he shows you why right out of the gate. Well, I was watching him in practice. He looks so in tuned, you can't believe it. His bowling. His bowling. All right. Not just a general attitude, right? <laughs> God, what a profile. <laughs> Sit up straight, Roy. Come on. Jeez. All the kids at home, that's not how you sit in a chair, folks. Yeah. Get that back arched a little bit, right? Well, Alan Runkle in the first frame right there. He, you know, we used it many times the last game, but really fortunate to have just that four pin standing after going high on the head pin. We've got some terrific trophies today that we're giving away. Nice clocks on them. As a matter of fact, they're already ticking over there. <laughs> I can see that. What an astute observation. Well, you know, I, I it's got that third hand. It's a little. <laughs> see, you can use that, that term, ticking, for two different things. Of course, ticking, the clock ticking, and then ticking, a little short for Paula ticking, which you seem <laughs> to do around here each and every week. Oh. Who, me? Absolutely. Not me. Alan Runkle making it to our championship match against Roy Chesbro. Has got to better last game if he wants to gain our 1988 end of the year crown. There you see the light mixer going into the wall. Alan Runkle knows he's got to get on the strike train here, and he's going to give this one a little bit of room. The head pin's going to do most of the damage. Going out to the sixth board on this one, head pin, center of your screen's going to go the right hand side. There you see it come off the wall. Well, it wasn't really going to do the work. The four. And the six were doing most of the work on that one. Roy Chesbro, right lane, striking like a machine. Dave, we were talking a little bit in the break. Folks at home may be curious to know the answer to this question as well. We have not seen Roy this year on our telecast. We have seen Alan. We've, made, we've alluded to that earlier as our first two competitors and Don Scudder and Bill Pollard. Why now, in our final championships match, does Roy Chesbro get a chance to be in our king when he's not been on the show all year? It's a great question, Tommy, and, and the reason being is uh, several years ago, as the popularity of the tournament dictated just through the number of, sheer number of entries to go to a two-day qualifier, the first thing they did was to try uh, a two-day qualifier and then just take the top three. But unfortunately, in several cases, the uh, top scores from Saturday 
or vice versa from Sunday were, were out of balance for whatever reason. And then they went to the format of taking two players from each day. Disastrous. Oh, boy. Third frame for Roy Chesbro on the lane he's been striking so well with. But they take the top qualifier from Saturday, top qualifier from Sunday. They are automatically seated onto the telecast. The second position from both days will bowl the roll off before the show. As you see Roy take off the two there, which is a good move. You never know when you need the count. And and even though a player might lose the roll off and not appear on the tele, <laughs> you're not happy, huh, Roy? Plenty of paper left. No, okay, fine. Uh, even though they might not appear on the telecast, it was the BPA's opinion, and I share their opinion, that the person bowled well enough to make it this far. He at least deserves to be in the finals. And with Alan Runkle smelling a little blood there, strikes in the third frame, a double against Royce Open. Next week, of course, we will have the youth finals, and the week after that will be the queen finals. Ron Bonner was our king last week at Glenmore Lanes. Didn't get to see him this year uh, this, in this finals, but he'll be back for next year. Certainly will. And, of course, Jen, you mentioned the fact that we have the youth and the queen, and those are brought to you by the good folks at Pepsi. And Lee's famous recipe. Mm -hmm. Good combination there. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. We have been so fortunate to have Look just... Out. Whoa, how about that? You see him just, well, I'll take it. Completely Aaron shot. Yeah, I'm sorry, he says, but you're going to take it, aren't you, Alan? Yeah, watch this ball. Pulls it right over the ninth board, and it just continues to roll. Fills up the 1-3 pocket as well as any right-hander ever has. Not the, <laughs> thing, not the thing Roy Chesbro wanted to see, but uh, purely unintentional. Getting back to our sponsors for just a sec, Jen, I know we have a lot of the folks from Hootapole out here today. And yes, we do. They have just been splendid. I mean, not only the fact that they sponsor the show, but, oh, my, again. Chesbro, pin high, and comes up with that 4-7-6-10 split. Know what he's laughing about? The fact that he was ripping the rack every shot in practice. The lights come on. Big four, big four. Gets away a couple of pins there. Not, Big not what you want As to we see. were saying with Hudipole, we have Mike Schott with us, of course, this morning, and Tony Plank, and we have Francie Patton, and George Hen Henriksen, and Connie Wagner, and Ken Dressman. We've got the whole crew out here. And we'd like to thank them for coming this morning. Certainly would. We'll be able to see those folks in the seats in just a little bit. But There's Vi McKinney to the right of your screen in the black. She is our manager out here at Strikes and Spares, and she's doing a fabulous job with this, with this establishment. Well, Roy Chesbro has apparently lost the touch. You've been really early going. Tommy, you, you said it. You know, he hasn't been on the telecast all year. <laughs> he obviously dominated the place last uh, or yesterday in the qualifier. But now, all of a sudden, uh, just completely losing it. The only thing we can possibly blame it on is a little red light. Absolutely. This is the first time, in case you just joined us, that Roy has been on the telecast and rough going. Rough going's right. Mm -hmm. But we'll get through this. I know we will. Okay. I have faith. All right. <laughs> Run down Roy's games for you. 268 in the opener, 205. 275. 188, 256, 195. Not what you'd say consistent across the house, but when he got to a pair that he was comfortable with, he strapped it for all it was worth. He averaged 231 for his games, and we talked about it on the opening. 268 on this pair, he's going to fall well short of that, obviously. Alan Rumpel has taken a just absolute command of this match. The score sheet will show you that. A double gives him 110. Well, I'll figure a 110 in the fourth frame that gives him a 60 pin lead with half a game to go. Going to be tough to catch. We had seven 300s this year in the King qualifiers, and Bob Rooney had two of those getting his at Brentwood Bowl and strikes and spares. We also had Gary Burbrink at Glenn Schmitz. Terry Rose also at Fairfield. The soft seven. We're going to watch it here. This is the hit. You know you've got a little stuff on the ball when you start carrying this. Four pin. Second one from the left-hand side of your screen. Right there going to the channel and then nudging out the seven as it's supposed to. Now, believe it or not, with the match out of control, Roy Chesbro might strike from here to the wall, Tommy. In his opinion, he's lost the match already. Pressure's off. 
you're just going to get up there and free wheel, and that may be exactly what it takes. What He's still got 220 up there if he can go all the way off the sheet. Well, Jenna's quick with that, you know? I mean, she has those numbers down, Pat, no question Not about really. it. Not really. I've been debating that for four frames <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Okay, well, no. <laughs> See, Jenny should have never said that. <laughs> See, the light, the light shot, the relaxed release will give you that. And instead of yanking it up through the nose, uh, the pin that's going to do all the work, uh, the head pin. Watch it. Middle of your screen is going to come off the wall. Left hand wall going to come back across and just do worlds of damage. Right here into the four, four into the eight, into the seven. Roy Chesbro. Yeah, you got enough paper, Roy, but you're going to need some help out of this man. Alan Runkle, if he continues to strike, is going to dominate this match. That one looked good. Well, it was a great shot. He actually uh, arced the ball and trusted it, and, he, and the ball came back from a peculiar angle, leaving the solid seven. I don't know if we... Uh, let's run this down. Alan Runkle's games, we talked about everybody else's. Alan Runkle, game one, slow start, 171. Improved a wee bit, 191. Then he improved a lot, 235. Then he was zeroed in with a 300, finished with 217, 258 to average 228 for our qualifier. Alan Runkle is showing us what he's made of right now. Yeah, I was getting ready to say that is getting it done in a hurry. But again, on this pair, 171, Tommy. That's hard to believe. It really is hard to believe. He found it nonetheless. Yeah, he <laughs> certainly has. Alan Runkle. There you're taking a look at what may very well be and appears to be our king on our final men's telecast and Moe's 10 more down in the eight. Top uh, eight finishers yesterday, Roy Chesbro, Alan Runkle, Don Scudder, Bill Pollard. We've seen all those people, Adam. Uh, obviously, Adam Rink, Paul Danforth, Dave Forwood, Daryl Higgins, and the winner today, as you said, Tommy, $1,700. And it appears like it's going to be going to Alan Rockwell. Second place appears to be Roy Chesbro for $850. Third place, $600. And fourth will still go home with $400. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. We have Todd Schiller this morning with us from West Hills Ford. He's been so gracious to come every morning and bring us a car that we should have given away. Should have been given away to Rika Calvises, who it should have been given away. But we have a Taurus station wagon this morning. We won't get to give it away today. Valued at $14,600. Jen, that means that for the finals, if you make it, I predict you do, you have a shot at that car. Uh -huh. Could I, you know what? I'm carless right now. As a matter of fact, I really honestly am. Yeah, well, I would love to home, drive one home. Carless. Yeah, I hear home, you. Let's hold on a second here now. Jay Straighten might out. be carless, right? But you know what that means, folks? That means she's driving around in a limousine. <laughs> In the front, driving, right. literally. <laughs> Roy Chesbro looking around. Not your day-to-day, -day, Roy. Uh, but, again, you've, you're you going to cash a nice ticket. There you see to the left, the gentleman in the blue jacket, Mike Schott. And the two men at our scoring table, we'll get a chance to look at in just a moment, as Runkle rolls a strike in the ninth. Gentlemen back at the scorer's table, Sam Coleman on the left with the glasses, and boy, he has just been super this season, as he has been each and every season. Jerry Bettinghouse, of course, he's been with us many, many weeks. I'd like to thank all the proprietors for coming out. Bring out the fat lady. Yeah. This season is over. You're looking at our 1988 champion, Alan Runkle. He's had the hot hand for a couple of months now. He's never been king either. What an appropriate situation for him to get his first kingship. Really? really? Norval, uh, Norval Martin was a previous owner of uh, Strikes and Spares. They are now organizing a three-man classic, a late 915. And they've got a lot of stuff going on here for the 88-89 season. Three-man classic, as we said, 915 on Wednesday. Three Lady Classic, et cetera, et cetera. They got all kinds of stuff happening here. Come on out and visit or just call in. They've got a nice lounge. I frequented that a few times. <laughs> We've it talked about nice. many times before. I Personally, I really like some of these smaller houses. We get a chance to come out to 12 lanes here at Strikes and Spares in a real cozy atmosphere. It is, uh, Tommy, and I'm, you know, you, you bring that out. The big centers are great. 
the small ones are great, and variety is the spice of life, and that's why we have all of them. You, you hear David or uh, Alan Runkel just finishing up here, and uh, Roy Chesbro just kind of said, well, I'll get out of your way here. The best I can do is 175. Alan's getting a hand from his mom and dad, another contingency over there. It's, yeah. Alan, you're buying, so don't act too happy. <laughs> We're going to get some of that 1700. But I would like if to. If Dave's sticking around to drink, <laughs> we might bet. spend most of it. <laughs> I would like yeah. to thank the two of you before we get out of here and all our technical crew at Channel 5. Today, Mike Rosing directing for Roy Alpers and Jesse Jackson, who are with us most of the year, and all the fine technical people we have at Channel 5, who are the best. Take my word for it, folks, at what they do in the country. And Jen, it's been great having you on our telecast this season. It's been fun. It really has. And David, a pleasure as always. All right, Tommy. Our king is Ellen Runkle. We'll be back to chat with him and give away some big bucks in just a moment. Honey, I know you've had a rough day. I'll stop by Lee's tonight. We know what brings you back to Lee's famous recipe. Fresh, tender, moist chicken with that special home-style taste. And for vegetable lovers, buttery corn on the cob, creamy, crunchy, fresh salads, green beans cooked with chunks of country ham. We know what you want. Oh, yeah, you'll be back. Lee's famous recipe, the great taste keeps you coming back. Then is now again, Cincinnati, and the flavor's pure 14K. Time to enjoy the crisp, refreshing taste of a Cincinnati legend. Then, 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 then. Beautiful 14K. Remember the name. You'll never forget the taste. High above the Blue Chip City, Seven Hills, lies one of the West's favorite entertainment centers, Western Bowl, where in January, the Hoinky Classic began another year of competitive tournament bowling. Since 1975, over $1 million in prize money has been awarded each year to men and women bowlers. Additional early bird prizes are paid to winners during the first six weeks of the Hoinky Classic, the world's largest handicap tournament. Share in the excitement. Western Bowl on Glenway Avenue, Western Hills. Spring comes early at America's Choice. America's Choice is eager to announce our spring cleaning sale. Reduced prices on all 1987 homes and specials on all 88 models. It's your choice at America's Choice. Free microwave, free washer and dryer, or free park rent. Come on by this weekend for all the exciting details. See why Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky are making America's Choice their choice in mobile homes in Milford and Walton, Kentucky. Take your choice, America's Choice. Donated by Carl's Bowlers Paddock, one through four. But the big thing's the cash, and that was brought in by the BPA. Don Scudder, first match, losing, but $400 for your efforts, Don. Congratulations. <laughs> Bill Pollard, not too shabby. 600 bucks for your efforts. There you go, one for you. And our tournament leader, Roy Chesbro, having a lot of trouble in the last game. Roy, though, great shooting all year. Great in the finals, $850 for your efforts. But the story of the year, Alan Runkle, the hot hand for the last month, $1,700. Alan, our 88 king, congratulations. Well, David, it's been a lot of fun. The folks at Huda Pole have been great this season. It's been fun working with you again. Well, likewise, Tommy, I appreciate it. One of the greatest sponsors in the world, the BPA, the Huda Pole people, Lee's Famous Recipe. It's great. The city deserves it. We'll do it next year. We hope you've enjoyed it. For Jennifer Kleekamp and David Neurath, Tom Brenneman saying so long from Strikes and Spare. The Greater Cincinnati BPA's Hudipol King of Bowling. Brought to you by Hudipol 14K, the Cincinnati legend. Remember the name, you'll never forget the taste.